Welcome back. This is Put It On The Plane, Activity 1.1, and we are still talking about Miss Jackson and her translating business. You can represent a problem situation in many ways. You use verbal descriptions to represent the relationship between the number of pages Miss Jackson translate and her total fees. Let's consider how to represent the relationship with tables and graphs. That is what we're going to be doing in this activity. So question one, it says, complete the table that shows the various projects that Ms. Jackson has managed recently. But first, let us remind ourselves of Ms. Jackson's fees. So remember, she charges $325 for her initial fee to get started, and then $25 per page or for each page translated. And we got this information from the getting started activity we just completed. So I'm first going to demonstrate how you would fill in one row, but then the rest, I'm going to give you guys time to work on your own. So number of pages. If she translates one page, well, she's got a $325 fee to get started plus $25 per page. How many pages? Just one. So times one, and that is equal to, I can do the mental math, this is easy. 25 times one is 25. 325 plus 25 more would then give us $350. Now you should be able to fit all of this within that column um, on your paper. Mine just didn't fit because my marker's thick. But notice how I included the initial fee I added in the rate per page and I multiplied my rate times the number of pages. Now, if you struggle with doing this work mentally, then that is okay. You can do it off to the side or on scratch paper. But if you'd like to try to do it mentally, 25 is a pretty easy number to multiply by because think in terms of what do we use every day that counts in increments of 25. Quarters. So think about if I have one quarter, that's 25 cents. If I have two quarters, that's 50 cents. If I have three quarters and then four quarters, well, four quarters is equal to a whole dollar. So 25 times four is 100. Then, of course, add that to 325. Now, if you see these types of rows that are blank, well, for that, you're going to have to think backwards okay how do i think backwards to get the number of pages now at this time set your timer for about four to five minutes and i want you to work on your own or with a partner to fill in the blanks in this table start with two then 10 and then 92 if you're struggling with going backwards, but then continue with 400, trying to think about how many pages gave her that total amount. Four to five minutes, set your timer, pause here. Alrighty, let's compare our tables. Whatever you don't have in this table, fill it in because you will need it for the next part of this activity. So for one page, $350. For two pages, $375. $400 is for three pages. $425 is for translating four pages. 10 pages gets her $575. 33 gets her $1,150. 71 pages earns her $2,100. And 92 pages, she will receive $2,625 dollars. Take a second to copy if you need. Pause here. Alrighty, let's move forward. When representing a relationship as a graph, you need to ensure that the bounds of your graph are appropriate size to surround the data from the table. What is the least number of pages that Ms. Jackson could translate? What is the greatest number of pages that Ms. Jackson can translate? I'm sorry, has translated recently. And three says, what are the least and greatest amounts of money that Ms. Jackson has earned? 
Go ahead and set a timer for about one minute and quickly answer these questions. Pause here. Alrighty, one minute is up. Let's compare answers. For number two, one page is the least amount that she can translate and 92 is the most that she's translated recently. For number three, $350 is the least amount that she would make translating one page and $2,625 is the greatest amount when she translated 92 pages. If your answers match mine, go ahead and give yourself a smiley. Alrighty, moving forward. Number four, it says consider the ranges of values in the table to choose lower and upper bounds for the X and Y axis. Write the lower and upper bound values in the table shown for each quantity. Now the lower bound and the upper bound just means where does your number, where are your numbers going to start on your X axis and where are they going to end on your X axis? Well, X and Y axis, where are your numbers gonna start and end on your graph. And then the interval, read this note off to the side so that you can understand what an interval is. Then number five says, calculate the difference between the upper and lower bounds for each quantity and the number of tick marks that you have on each axis. Then choose an appropriate interval for each axis and write these in the table. So on your own or with a partner, you're gonna use the graph on the next page to determine where, is my, where are my numbers going to start, our lower bound, where should my numbers end, my upper bound, and then by what interval am I counting by? Take about two minutes to see what you can fill in and then we'll fill in this table together. Pause here. Alrighty, let's go over this. The lower bound when we're talking about pages translated and that is on our x-axis, well, we always start with zero and honestly, just go ahead and fill in earnings too. On our y-axis, we also start with zero. Our upper bound, our pages translated, so we the maximum was 92 pages. Let's just go ahead and round up to 100. And then the interval, well, there are 10 spaces on our graph. So our intervals, 10. And for our upper bound, when it comes to our earnings, our highest is 2,625. We're gonna round that up to 3,000. And if we've got 10 spaces, my intervals will be in sections of 300. Quickly get this copied because now we're moving on to graphing. Question six says use the bounds and intervals to label each axis, then create a graph of the data from the table. So I'm gonna model to help you get started. Then you're gonna set a timer and complete this on your own. So first, our page is translated. Our lower bound is zero, for both actually. And then pages translated, the max was 10. Apologies, not 10, 100, because we're counting by 10. So 10, 20, 30, and so forth. And then on our y-axis, we started zero, and our upper bound was 3,000. Our intervals are 300 each. Excuse me, I was writing 300 again. 600, 900, and so forth. On your own, you're gonna fill in the rest of the intervals, but I'm gonna graph one point to show you or to give you a starting point so that you can continue graphing on your own. So if Ms. Jackson translated one page, I'm gonna find one on my X axis, which is somewhere in between zero and 10, but really close to zero. Then I'm going to find 350 on my Y axis, which is somewhere in between 300 and 600, but closer to 300. And I'm gonna estimate that my point is somewhere here. And there we have our first point plotted. Now remember, don't draw those lines um, that got you to your point. Only plot your point and that is it. 
And if you'd like, you can even label your point on the graph, just like I did here. That point is 1, 350. At this time, on your own or with a partner, set a timer for about five minutes to work on plot mm, three to four minutes to plot the rest of these points, and then we will compare answers. Pause here. Your graph should look similar to this. Now your points don't have to be perfectly plotted and your line doesn't have to be perfectly drawn as long as you've got somewhat this graph, something that looks like this, then you are good to go and we can answer the following questions. Moving on. Number seven, it says, are the data, are the data continuous or discrete? Explain your reasoning. Continuous, if you need a reminder, essentially means, does my data fall on any point on this line here? Meaning I can have decimal numbers, halves, quarters, um, thirds, or does my data only apply to these points plotted? Number eight says, describe the relationship between the two quantities represented in the graph, meaning the relationship between pages translated and the total. And then nine says, write a linear equation to represent the situation. Make sure you define your variables. On your own or with a partner, set a timer for two minutes to answer these three questions. Pause here. All righty, let's compare answers for seven. The data is discrete because if you remember in the getting started, uh, Ms. Jackson does not translate partial pages, whole and full pages only. So those pages translated can only be whole numbers. Number eight, you could have noticed or described it a different way, but I simply said, as the number of pages increase, so does the total cost. I shorthanded using symbols, but if you can explain it, I mean, if you can understand it that way, you can also put the symbols as well. And for number nine, T represents the total, P represents pages. So the linear equation I created was T total is equal to 325 plus 25 P. Take a couple seconds to get that if you don't have it. And then we're moving on. Question 10, when you first analyze the situation, you listed two quantities that remain constant in the scenario, $325 and $25 per page. Refer to your equation and graph to answer each question. Where is 325 represented in the graph and in the equation? And where is $25 per page represented in the graph and in the equation? Set a timer for two minutes. Answer this on your own or with the partner. Actually, take only one minute. Pause here. Alrighty, go ahead and compare your answer to mine. So the 325 on the graph is represented at point zero three twenty five somewhere around here. And then in the equation, it's that first constant. B, the 25 per page on the graph is represented, and I just put with the increase or in the increase because you increase $25 each time a new page is translated. And then in the equation, it is, I underlined it, represented with that 25 times P. Alrighty, quickly take those notes if you have not get, yet gotten them down. And then we're moving on. Question 11, is there a proportional relationship between the number of pages translated and Ms. Jackson's earning? Justify your answer using the table, equation, and graph. And 12 says, use the graph to answer each question. Explain your reasoning. Approximately how much money would Ms. Jackson earn if she translated 57 pages? Approximately how many pages would Ms. Jackson need to translate to earn $750? Now for 11, you learned way back in earlier, in the beginning of the year, what a proportional relationship looks like on the graph. It must be or must have two things. And then for 12, approximate your answer, meaning it does not have to be exact, but estimate 
for 57 pages, about how much money would that be looking at the graph? This shouldn't take you long at all. Take one minute to answer 11 and 12, either on your own or with a partner. Pause here. Alrighty, for number 11, is this a proportional relationship? Um, no, it is not, because a graph must show two things to be proportional. One, it must be a straight line, which it is, but it also must pass through the origin, and this one doesn't. So that is just one way you could have justified that answer. For number 12, just from looking at my graph, 57 is about where that point is I put on the graph, and then on my y-axis, if I were to guess, that's somewhere around 1700, 1750. So if you've got somewhere in between that range, then you're good to go. For B, you should have found $750 on your graph, which is maybe somewhere around here. And on my graph, that shows a little less than 20. So that could be about 16, 17, or 18 pages. If there are questions about any of this, be sure to write them down and then ask and discuss with the neighbor after the lesson. Alrighty, moving on for our final question. It says, for each translating project Ms. Jackson completed this month, determine if her pay was correct. If it is not, state the amount she should have received explain each answer in the terms of the equation and the graph. Now, I want you to read each of these A, B, and C on your own. And in the next three to four minutes, you're going to determine if her pay was correct. You can use your equation or your graph. Hint, hint, graph to me is a little easier. All right, take about three minutes to answer A, B, and C. Pause here. Alrighty, let's check answers for A. Yes, Ms. Jackson's pay was correct for 23 pages. She would have earned $900. You can check and verify using the graph or the equation. For B, the page, excuse me, the price or the check she received was not correct. If you calculated or used the graph, you might have noticed that she forgot to add in the $325 fee. And for C, again, this check was not correct. She received too much money. For 35 pages, she only should have received about $1,200. If you don't have these answers, go ahead and quickly copy. Alrighty, and this concludes this activity for this lesson. You have represented the situation with Ms. Jackson's book translating business multiple ways. As a scenario, which it was given to us, in a table, with an equation, and on a graph. These representations are useful for analyzing the situation in different ways. Awesome job today. I will see you in the next video.